Hey guys, this is Brian with Turp Mechanic. Today I want to talk about lime, calcitic lime, going down into the soil of a lawn. How fast does it work and how big of a difference does it make? Approximately five months ago, back in December of 2022, I pulled some core samples out of this front lawn right after we moved into the house to learn a little bit more about my soil. I learned that this soil in this lawn at that time was fairly acidic. It was approximately 5.5 on the pH scale. So somewhere around the 1st of February in mid to late winter, I ended up applying roughly 24 pounds of calcitic lime to this lawn space. The goal was to bring pH up, make it less acidic, more alkaline. And I knew that when I did that, I wasn't going to be bringing pH up high enough to get it into the optimal zone, but I knew I was gonna be getting it closer. So for this video, I wanted to show how much improvement I got out of that application. Essentially four months, maybe four and a half months have passed since I applied that lime to this soil. So a week ago, I pulled another core sample and sent it off to the same lab that I sent the original soil samples to. It should be an apples to apples comparison. And I wanna share the results with you before I go and apply lime to my lawn again. Tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow, let's do it today. Hey, let's all do right. it again. Let's do it again, she says. So that's really all the dirt we need. I just took a little tiny bit from all four Daddy. of the plugs, mix it all up. I'm gonna make sure that I get as much of the uh, call it grass leaves and sticks and things out of there but it's pretty pretty clean dirt right now then I'm gonna throw it into my collection cup I'm gonna use the exact same lab that I used uh, five months ago to check check the soil pH I actually ran the soil test back in December five months ago but I applied the lime four months ago right. because I'm gonna send this to a, to a science lab and there's gonna be some scientists that are gonna look at the dirt and tell me if it's acidic or if it's alkaline. Okay. Does that sound cool? Yeah. And they're gonna give us a number called a pH. And we want that pH to be closer to six, maybe to seven. But, the paper off. but it's probably not gonna be that high. Yeah, that's okay, I'll just leave that on. There's our dirt, all mixed up in there little thing, the little doodad that was inside the liquid is going to absorb the nutrients. That way the science lab can test it. Now this goes in the package, but I got to write down the number so that I can register the packet. Okay. Okay. I'm going to register the number, stick it in there, and then mail it off. And in about seven days, I'm going to know what the pH is. All right, let's turn off the recording, huh? Okay. Okay. Here we are, it's June 1st. This is a warm season lawn. Uh, all of this uh, light colored green is the newest Kakuya grass, which is starting to, which has been emerging from the ground. Uh, I have found that as the Kakuya comes up, it's lighter green, and then as it becomes more established and kind of blankets the ground, it kind of darkens up into this deep green. But as, you, as you're gonna see, from my most recent soil test and the prior soil test, I have very low iron in the soil. So my guess is if I had a lot of iron in the soil or if I was applying iron-based fertilizers uh, regularly, uh, this lighter colored green might be a little bit darker. Might be able to read between the lines here, but I'm gonna go ahead and apply some more lime to bring my pH even closer to the optimal range, but I'm also gonna be putting down more iron to get it into the soil to encourage a deeper green from even the newer growth, let alone the older growth. I've currently lived in this house for seven months now. I've been working on the lawn for about six months. Most of those months were over the winter. Uh, I feel like I should be further along on this lawn, uh, but you can't fight the weather here in Southern California. It has been a cold winter and spring has never really warmed up so much. So it's really hard to push a warm season lawn if we're not actually experiencing warm season uh, temperatures. Lime, however, we can deal with that. Older Kikuyu grass. Younger Kikuyu grass. Not quite as dark. Really young Kikuyu grass. Even lighter green. Darn near yellow. 
iron will help with that but honestly getting ph into the correct zone will help as well so this is the soil sample that i took back in december I sent it off for testing and then at the end of January 2023 I went and applied lime to the lawn. Here we are May 23rd I took the next sample this has the new pH reading in it. My original soil sample shows my pH in the 5.36 range but like I said I did two different soil tests from the same dirt so let's look at the other one. This is the other one that happened on the same day from the same soil sample, 5.61. So 5.35, 5.61, average it out. I'm saying that it's 5.5. Then after I applied the calcitic lime, remember dolomitic lime is another option. It would probably move the needle a little bit faster. But as you can see, I'm pretty high on calcium and I don't really need magnesium. So the dolomitic lime didn't make a whole lot of sense for me. The calcitic lime did. My most recent one, however, shows my pH came up to 5.75. So if we're considering the first one was 5.5, after 24 pounds of lime went down per thousand square feet, now my pH is up to 5.75. I'm still low. In fact, this 5.8 right here, I don't think that that's optimal. I don't want it to be anywhere below 6.0. So I'm going to continue applying lime until I get this up into the sixes and then I'll start a maintenance mode of maintenance because any application of lime now will work for a while, but then it will start fading. That's why people who apply lime to their lawn tend to do it regularly, season after season after season. I want to get this pH into the correct zone and then maintain it there. My natural soil out front doesn't want to be up in the mid sixes. So I have to add lime to it regularly to keep it in the mid sixes. But I got to front load a whole bunch of stuff to get it up there in the first place. In case you're curious about the other stuff, I haven't been pushing heavy nitrogen in the front yard and I have not been putting any phosphorus on because there's a ton of phosphorus in the lawn to begin with. When we moved into the house, for some reason or other, the phosphorus level was like through the roof. Potassium is getting a little bit higher. So I am doing N and K. So the potassium should eventually get up into the zone through my regular fertilization schedule. And because of the iron, the lack of iron in the lawn, uh, I'm going to continue adding iron fertilizers into the lawn to deepen up the green. And that will eventually get back into the zone as well. That's not something that I want to just pump a whole ton in there. That can gradually improve over time very easily. All right, so back in winter, I applied Job's Organic Calcitic Lime to the lawn, uh, otherwise known as Garden Lime. Uh, my store didn't have it, like it was out of stock when I went to go buy. This is all that they had in the store. So I'll probably have to either wait and go back again uh, to get some more, buy something online. In the meantime, this is the calcium, uh, or the calcitic lime that I'm gonna be putting down. But anyway, that's beside the point. I'm only gonna be applying 15 pounds per thousand square feet. This whole lawn space is just a shade under a thousand square feet, so I'm just calling it a thousand. So 15 pounds is going to be less than what I put down in winter. So I would assume my winter application brought my pH from 5.5 to 5.75. I'm going to guess that this application is going to bring the pH up again over the next few months, closer to 5.9. Total guess, but I think it's probably a reasonable guess. Later in the summer, probably as we get closer to fall, I'll do another application trying to get the pH to push even higher into the low sixes. That'll come at a later date. At some point, the first application of lime is going to start wearing off. So I'm going to have to maintain this and track the pH. I don't want to drop 30 bucks every single time I put down uh, an application of lime on a soil test. So I'll probably start doing that a little bit less frequently, um, maybe even wait a whole year. I don't know, we'll see. But I do want to better understand how these applications of lime are affecting the pH in the lawn because when I get the pH of the lawn into the optimal zone, then that means that the desirable grass here is going to start uptaking and using the micronutrients far more efficiently than it does when it's out of the optimal range. That's the whole point. If the pH is too low or too high, it doesn't really matter so much what we put into the lawn 
because the grass isn't going to use those micronutrients very well if the pH is out of whack. This is actually more important than just about anything else in terms of fertilization. Certainly there needs to be some nitrogen. The uh, NPK needs to be in the lawn, but I can't fine tune anything efficiently if the pH is off. I literally believe getting the pH right in your lawn is one of the most fundamental, most important tasks that anyone should uh, should take on in the hobby of keeping a lawn. If you want your lawn to look great, yeah, you could just like push it like crazy with a ton of nitrogen, or you could improve the health of the whole system. And that's what dialing in that pH is all about. Is that right? I don't know. Let's give it a try. If it comes out too slow, I'll speed it up. If it comes out too fast, I'll slow it down. Somewhere in here, probably. Lime will raise pH. Soil sulfur will lower pH. I've got videos on both raising pH and lowering pH right here. There goes the car. If you'd like to learn more about how those processes work, then watch either of those videos. The soil tests that I have used, and both of them, uh, in fact, there's like three different ones that I have used are all linked down in the description below. Now, I'm not going to link to all of them, but the one that I used is linked down in the description below. If you think you want to figure out what your pH is, it's probably the simplest way to do it. 